Okay, so as I've said, the first theme, which is theme one representing data, you are less likely to be asked a specific question about that. Okay, um, so remember that theme one, if I'll just write it down here. Okay, so theme one, which is also to do with representing data, it had kind of a few important things to take out of this. Okay. So the first part, which was like, why do we care about statistics? That was more of an introduction to the module, okay? Hopefully you found it interesting, but you're not gonna necessarily be asked about something like this in an examination situation, okay? To be honest with you, theme one was more useful for your report, okay, your assignment, um, which you handed in. Um, okay, so theme one, the main takeaways then, are mean, obviously variance and standard deviation. OK, those are kind of the two main, two main ones. Of course, when I say mean, I should really say average, right? Because there are really three types of mean that we worry about in this course, which are mean, median, and mode, OK? So averages and standard deviations, OK, slash variances, those were the kind of the key ones. Then also differences between samples and populations, OK? And also, once again, remember the standard deviation, the formula changes depending on whether you're working with a population or a standard or a sample, right? So being aware of the difference between the two, being aware of how the formula changes as well. Just remind me, how does the formula change for standard deviation if you're looking at a sample versus a population? Divided by n. Yeah, good. Which one? Population or st sample? Just a moment. Yep. Sample. The population. Yeah, good. So if you're dealing with standard deviation, remember there's a one over. Okay, if it's n, it means you're working with a population. If it's n minus one. minus one, you're working with a sample, right? And then you have all the sort of, you know, gubbins over here, like the sum of x squared minus the sum of x all squared, etc. And I think there's an n in there as well, right? So there's all kind of fun stuff there as well. But yeah, the key thing is, are you working with a sample? Are you working with a population? That's what goes at the front, right? And then we did also look at the second part of, uh, of theme one. We looked at things like box plots and um, histograms and things like this. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not going to ask you questions like this in the exam, just because they are a little bit more basic compared to some of the other concepts. However, they are important. Being able to interpret graphs and things like that, which is really what I was trying to get across here, is still an important element of the course. Right? Um, it's just that I'm not necessarily going to say, OK, here's a histogram. Can you find this for it? Because that was in your formative test. That was way back in whenever we did it in March, I think it was, or February. Right? So yeah, that's pretty much it for theme one, to be honest with you. Now, theme one, I would say, is not going to be as examinable. Right? Um, there will obviously be elements of these features or elements of these topics within other questions. Of course there are. You know, I'm going to ask you about averages. I'm going to ask you about standard deviations in other questions. But I'm not going to say, OK, here's a set of data. Um, you know, can you uh, give me the standard deviation or something like that? OK. OK, good. So that was kind of theme one. Now, theme two is where really things started hotting up a little bit. So theme two is all to do with probability. OK. So you remember there were two parts to probability here. The first part was your permutations and your combinations, right? So there's a number of ways of arranging objects and the number of ways of choosing objects, OK? Now, can you just remind me, actually, I know the formulas are in the formula sheet, but if I'm dealing with a permutation, first of all, first of all, what's the difference between a permutation versus a combination? What's the difference? In one of them, you are ordering. I, I guess it's permutation. Good. Yeah. And yeah. combination, you are just choosing. Excellent. Well done. So this deals with order, and this just deals with a choice. Yeah, perfect. OK, so you've always got to think to yourself, hmm, am I ordering these objects or aren't I ordering these objects? And that'll tell you which one you're going to use. Can anybody remember the formula? to work this out. Uh, n factorial divided by uh, n minus 
Good, well done, yeah? Remember factorial in combinations and permutations land, okay? So the ways of choosing objects or arranging objects. It's simply say, okay, I have n objects. This is the number of ways of arranging them. The key thing is with a permutation, I'm not gonna arrange all n objects, right? I'm only gonna arrange r of them. In other words, you're gonna stop after the n minus rth place. So you'll arrange the first one, the second one, and the third one, okay? Um, which means that there's gonna be n minus r kind of left over, for example, right? Good, now obviously a choice, you still have the n factorial, you still have the n minus r factorial, but what do you have to adapt about this formula to make it into a choice rather than an arrangement? Dot r. Good. So you have another r factorial in here. The idea is that, of course, if this is the number of ways of arranging those um, r objects from a choice of n, with a combination, you don't care about the arrangements. So you just divide by the number of arrangements that you've got in there. In other words, r factorial of them, right? You get rid of those arrangements, okay? So there you go, so permutations and combinations there. And of course, there can be slight variations on that as well. So remember that we looked uh, briefly at different conditions surrounding the permutations and combinations. For example, you know, I, want to, I, have sem I have 10 people, I wanna make sure that these two people are always standing together in a line, right? And then you have those kind of conditions that you need to consider from that. The second half of probability was our conditional probability. So quite literally, if I wanna find the probability of an event happening, let's call it A, given that another event has already happened, okay? Now it might well be that these two events are independent of each other, so it doesn't actually matter, but let's assume they are dependent. In other words, the probability of A will change depending on whether B has happened or not. Now remember there was a formula, it was derived by Thomas Bayes. Can anybody remember what this formula is? Uh, probability of happening A, B, B, Given A. Okay, 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 okay. Minus. Not quite. Times probability of A. Good. All divided by probability of B. Good. Yeah, well done. I think we don't we don't need to memorize it. We just we just refer to the table. Exactly, formula sheets. Yeah, perfect. Same with these, right? You don't need to memorize them. I'm not, I'm not in the art of memorizing formulas. I think it's pointless, to be honest with you, okay? Memorizing formulas is pointless. I'm gonna give you formulas like this. It's much more important that you understand why they exist, why they make sense, and how to use them, okay? I'm not interested in whether you can remember that there's a B there and an A there, etc. you know? But yeah, so conditional probability. Remember, I always ask, or I always advise rather, draw a tree. I find a tree quite an intuitive way of visualizing situations. It might take a little bit more time, but if you draw the tree out, you're able to visualize exactly what's going on with those situations, okay?